This week on Life in the Park, we'll take a look at some of the highlights from 2015 and the latest news and events around the park. Welcome to this week's edition of Life in the Park. I'm Scott Smith. In this week's cover story, we'll take a look at some of the events and milestones from around St. Louis Park during 2015. That's coming up. But first, here's the latest news and events in the park. The parents of what nurses believe to be Minnesota's first newborn of 2016 say he is a miracle baby. Miles Thomas Ruddy was born at 12.05 a.m. on January 1st at Methodist Hospital here in the park. But his parents weren't sure it would ever happen. Melissa Ruddy was diagnosed with ovarian cancer at age 19. Doctors said she most likely would have a lot of trouble having a child if she ever had one at all. But two years ago, Melissa and her husband, Matt, had their first child, daughter Maxine. Friday, they had child number two, Miles. Miles weighed in at seven pounds, eight ounces, and, and is 20 inches long. Not that he's complaining, but Matt admitted that he was actually hoping to have one of the last babies of 2015. <laughs> he smiled and said he was hoping for the tax break. Thanks to KSDP's Josh Rosenthal for the story. The Zero Waste Packaging Ordinance was approved by City Council at its last meeting of 2015. The ordinance will increase traditional recycling and organics recycling by requiring licensed food establishments to use zero waste packaging that is either reusable, returnable, recy recyclable, or compostable. It will also require food establishments to provide recycling and organics recycling receptacles for food and beverage packaging discarded by customers dining on site. The ordinance will take effect on January 1, 2017. The city will be spending the next year working with affected businesses to provide them with information and resources to help them comply with the ordinance. The new year welcomes St. Louis Park's new mayor, Jake Spano, and council member Tom Miller at the city council's first meeting of the year, January 4th. Jake moved into the top spot, winning in the general election after Jeff Jacobs decided not to run for re-election in 2015. Tom Miller replaces Spano as council member at large B. Both, along with returning council member Steve Hoffman, were sworn into four year terms at the city council meeting. Christmas trees, wreaths, and garland will be collected along with yard waste during the first three weeks in January. These uh, items can be set out for collection at the curb or alley on your regular collection day. Advanced disposal will collect them for no charge through January 12th. Only natural greens will be collected. Before putting your tree out for collection, please remove decorations, wires, stands, lights, tinsel, etc. Trees must be free of plastic tree bags as well. Wreaths and garland must be in a compostable plastic or brown paper bag and free of decorations and wires. Organics recycling customers can place wreaths and garland inside their yard in organic waste carts. Materials must be out by 7 a.m. on collection day to ensure collection. Please wait until the day before or the day of your collection to set out your greens so they don't get stuck in the snow or ice. Artificial trees, wreaths, and greenery can be donated or bagged and placed inside your garbage cart. If your item is too big to fit into your cart with the lid completely closed, place it next to your garbage and call Waste Management at 763-783-5423 to schedule an extra collection. You can help plan the future of Westwood Hills Nature Center. The Nature Center is planning their development and programming goals for the future, which will include the Nature Center facilities, outdoor programming sites, infrastructure, and programming needs. The master plan will serve as the vision, guiding principles, resource allocation, and action plan to meet the identified needs of the community and to assist the city in planning for future build building development at Westwood Hills. Citizen input will play a key role in shaping this plan. The next public input meeting is January 12th from 6 to 8 p.m. at Westwood Hills Nature Center, 8300 West Franklin Avenue. Well, Mother Nature finally cooperated with some seasonal temperatures, allowing all of the city's outdoor ice rinks to open. Please check the city website, stlouispark.org, for rink locations and warming house hours of operation. During the winter, salt is commonly used to keep roads, parking lots, and sidewalks clear of ice and snow. In fact, it's estimated that more than 350,000 tons of salt are used in the metro area each year. According to the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency, our water should follow the advice our doctors have been giving for years. Stick to a low-salt diet. 
That's because rock salt, which contains chloride, can pollute surface and groundwater and can be harmful to fish and other freshwater wildlife. Once it's in the water, chloride becomes a permanent pollutant that continues to accumulate in the environment over time. Here are some steps that everyone can take to make a difference. Shovel first. The more snow and ice you remove, the less salt you will have to use and the more effective it can be. After the ice has been broken up, you can decide whether a de-icer is even necessary to maintain traction. Apply salt before a storm. Salting before can prevent snow and ice from building up, therefore reducing overall salt use. Slow down. Drive for winter conditions and be courteous to slow moving plows. The slower the plow drives, the more salt will stay on the road where it's needed. Remember that more salt does not mean more melting. Use less than four pounds of salt per 1,000 square feet. An average parking space is about 150 square feet. And be patient, salt takes time to work. Use sand for traction below 15 degrees as most salt stops working at this temperature. And sweep up extra salt. If salt is visible on dry pavement, it's no longer doing any work and it will be washed away. The excess can be swept up and reused for the next snow or disposed of in the trash. And in this week's cover story, let's take a look at some of the major events occurring during the past year. In 2015, the Southwest LRT Green Line extension was green-lighted to move forward even after the price tag ballooned to nearly $2 billion. Wooddale Station is located by new and expanding residential developments, including Hoygard Village along West 36th Street. From the station, the line crosses over Highway 100 and travels at grade across Beltline Boulevard. Significant cuts were subsequently made, mainly reducing stations in Eden Prairie. Construction is expected to begin in 2017, with completion in 2020. Road construction continued in the park with the completion and dedication of the Louisiana Avenue and Highway 7 interchange. Hey, how many times during the course of my life I sat at this intersection, either waiting to go on Highway 7 or Louisiana Boulevard. I'm sorry, Louisiana Avenue. The award-winning design includes multiple roundabouts to assure smooth traffic flow in this once congested major intersection. Major construction is ongoing on Highway 100 in the park. The replacement of the Minnetonka Boulevard Bridge over Highway 100 was completed in 2015 to the relief of motorists, residents and businesses along the entire corridor. 2016 will see the replacement of the Highway 7 bridge and the expansion to three lanes of traffic on north and southbound Highway 100. Not everything is shiny and new in the park, as evidenced by the demise of the international icon we knew as Tucker's Treehouse. Years of wind and weather took their toll on the seven-story structure. Storm damaged a portion of the giant maple tree and a small portion of the house tumbled to the ground, signaling the end was near. As Mark Tucker constructed the house board by board, he deconstructed it in the same way by himself. Sadly, we say goodbye to some larger-than-life people in 2015. Longtime Oriole and Gopher track coach Roy Griak passed away this past year. One of the most colorful and beloved personalities in the park, Elliot Royce, rode his bicycle in his final Partacular Parade last summer. The Music in the Park program played a sad note with the passing of Bob Dylan tribute concert organizer and musician Billy Hallquist shortly after appearing in the performance last August. We also bid farewell to an era of life according to Jeff Jacobs. Jeff has been in public office for nearly a quarter century in the park. He decided to take Mondays off in 2015, and the city gave him a well-deserved send-off with fond memories, a lot of laughter, and a few tears. Proudest thing I will ever say until I draw my last breath. Hi, everybody. I'm Jeff. And once upon a time, I used to be the mayor of St. Louis Park. Lots of food left, everybody. As one door closes, another is sure to open, and in walked in our new mayor, Jake Spano. Jake was sworn in in 2016, along with new council member Tom Miller, although technically they were elected in November of 2015. 
Jake will let us know a little more about himself on next week's Life in the Park cover story. The annual Fire Station Open House took place at Fire Station 1 as the department celebrated its 100-year anniversary. Hundreds of hot dogs and beverages were consumed as residents observed and participated in demonstrations of fire safety and rescue operations. Firefighters past and present reflected on their years of service at a special ceremony led by Chief Corey. Welcome to the next 100 years. We have uh, some great things thought, we're thinking of doing some things. One of the things I'd really like to have you focus on is the open house. The open house is something we're going to try to think about a different way, a more creative way to do the open house. Maybe even thinking about introducing some of the old style fire carnival uh, concepts back into this open house for this one year. There's the truck. I says, well, what do I do? I says, well, when the tones go off, get on the truck. And then you puppy dog the captain for X number or six months or whatever it is and uh, learn the trade of being a firefighter. The day I started, I only had a short coat and short boots. The day I started, I started on a Sunday. I had to bring my own gear in that day because I didn't have any. I really didn't get any for about six months before I really got gear that, that I wasn't borrowing from someone else. So They were all open cabs, so in the wintertime, of course, it was awful cold. I used to ride in the back and pull the tarp over the hose over our heads so we'd stay warm. I stood on the sideboard, held onto the chrome, which gave you the expression chrome hanger, and I went from Northside's fire station down to the Fuchu Fire, down on Excelsior Boulevard, and 10 degrees below zero. And when I got there, I was looking forward. I hope it's still burning so I can warm up a little bit. 2016 is just getting underway, and Park TV will keep you informed throughout the year. Remember, you can keep up to date in the park by visiting our Facebook page at facebook.com slash St. Louis Park, or check us out on Twitter at twitter.com slash St. Louis Park. So that's it for this week's edition of Life in the Park. Thanks for watching. Join us again next week for another edition of Life in the Park right here on Park TV. Thank you.